You are listening to Salty Believer Unscripted, a conversation on Christian ministry and the Christian life. This is Salty Believer Unscripted. I'm Brian Catherman. And I'm Josiah Walker. We are at it again. We're going to be answering a question that has come to us. And and I like this. I like that uh, we have a topic to converse about that people might be interested in. And so if you have a topic that you'd like to share, we have an email address. It is saltybeliever uh, at gmail.com. So if you have a question you'd like to ask, that's how you can do it. Or you can go to saltybeliever.com and there's a there's a forum in there you can ask a question. But here's the question, Josiah, and, okay. and I hope, I hope uh, you're ready for this. But the question is, if you were asked, okay, so Josiah, you're a pastor. Someone comes to you and they ask this. They say, okay, if I need to go out and get any one resource other than the Bible to help study the Bible better, or and maybe these are different resources, maybe teach my family or do discipleship, what yeah. would the resource be? And maybe what I've done is I've introduced like multiple avenues. So maybe you'd sure. have one for one, one for yeah. something else. But what's the number one resource you would tell Jiffy Lube Joe to go out and get besides a copy of God's Word? Um, I, I, you could go anywhere in this, but I'm going to go with a copy of God's Word plus. So I, I think the great first best step would be a study Bible that has God's Word in it, but also has a little bit of commentary along with it and some study Bible notes with it. So Okay, uh, so which one are you thinking? Like the uh, prophetic study Bible of end time study uh or, you know, what do you got there? Well, you've done a video in the past on lots of different study Bibles, but I think my top two, you know, here at my church, we use the Christian Standard Bible. So I really like the Christian Standard Bible or the CSB Study Bible. Um, it's got color pictures and stuff like that. And then I think my number two would be the ESV Study Bible, if you're using the ESV translation. Uh, even if you don't use either of those translations, there's great notes in there um, from professors and Bible scholars and commentators. Is that the order you'd put them in? Do you think that's your, is that how you stack them? Like, do you think it's CSB, then ESV, or do you, are they, what do you think? You know, I, I might need to do some study. So uh, I, I've had the ESV for years, um, but I've been using, kind of turning to the CSB more, um, especially with my youth group that I'm teaching on Sunday mornings, um, because they all have the CSB study Bible. So we've been turning to those notes and that. Well, because um, it is it is nice to have that in the translation that the church you know, if you're if you're yeah. kind of – which is helpful to stick to a translation. Everybody gets onto the same Bible. Right. Not that that's a requirement to study the Bible, but – so if yeah. you're already all in that and then you go to the CSB, that's helpful. Yeah. So since I've come to Trinity where I'm at, they, they work a lot in the ESV. I don't know if they would call it an official – Maybe they do. I haven't asked, but everybody seems to have the ESV. And so I've been opening the ESV study Bible a little more. Yeah. And uh, and so I don't know. I, I If I were to – so you, you said get a study Bible. I would say the same sure. thing. The question, yeah. though, is I don't know if you could only get one. Right. That's the deal, Josiah. If you could only get yeah. one, which one would you say go buy? Uh, I've got my top three over here, but I'm thinking <laughs> – I'm thinking the ESV. I think the ESV is a good way to go. Um, I really do. I think it's got some really solid notes in it. Is that kind of is that because they put the pressure on you, or is that is that really where you where you think you land? Man, I don't know. I, I might need to go back and do some research. I'm really torn, but, but I'm gonna say ESV. I, what do you what do you think, man? Like, I you got both of these. I think the ESV, but here's here's what I think because I think the CSB um, Study Bible. I think came out of the Holman Study Bible, so I'm not sure if it's yeah. been very uh, well updated when they updated the CSB translation. So here's what I, okay, Josiah, so first of all, to answer the question for me, if someone said, hey, the Bible plus one resource, I would say sure. go out and get an ESV Study Bible. That's probably what I would, That go get that, and and that'll serve you well. Get Get one with a good binding because the bindings fall apart on these big Bibles and stuff, but that's where I'd go. But here's what I think we use should use the CSB. I think if you go with that one, I think they're really close to each other. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That translation. I, I mean, if you had, so we're going to come back to this because I'm going to say, what if you had three and four and five sure. yeah. options, or money was not a problem, or um, excuse me, <clears throat> I uh, I lost my voice at a high school football game. Haven't done that for like thirty years. Anyway, uh, that's what happens when you have kids. So here's what I think we should do, Josiah. I think 
that, uh, and, and maybe you have time for this. If you don't have time for this, then then shoot my idea down. But if you have time, I think when you're doing stud, some study, and I know you go well beyond these study Bibles, but you're using it for the kids in your youth teaching. I'm sure you probably open it occasionally for sermon prep and other things. Yeah. Let's take the next few weeks or a couple weeks or however much time you might have, open them both side by side Yeah. in whatever you're working on. Let's just see how often you go, okay, CSB kind of wins the day here, or ESV wins the day, or hey, this one had something this one didn't have, or like, let's just, let's just give that a try for a season, you and I both, and then we'll come sure. back after some time and say, okay, here's what I noticed. And you have another one there. What's the third one you have on your stack? So I, the third one's going to show my cards a little bit, but I'm a Reformed pastor, so I have the Reformation Study Bible, um, which I really love. I, I really have found it helpful. I bought this Bible as I was trying to figure out Reformed theology versus Armenian theology. And it was just a really helpful resource uh, along those lines. So, but so if someone walks into your office, though, you're you love it, but you're not. You didn't put that in your top two. How come? Um, mostly because it has a, a, a strong theological bent that one way, um, and so a lot of the notes are are more drilled in that way. Where the, the notes on the other two, I think, are more broad and speak to the the main issues. In those scripture passages. Okay, that's that's fair. That's a really fair take on that. So, okay, one resource. You're saying the ESV Study Bible, or if someone wanted to go CSB. But what if yeah. they had, say, what if they're going to get two two resources? Sure. And the question yeah. is, um, I want to uh, help my family. You know, I'm just I'm I'm a busy guy. I go to work. I want to help my family to study the Bible a little bit as we have questions and as we're learning. So it's going to come alongside our family Bible reading time. It's going to help us. The first resource I have now, we'll say, is the ESV study Bible. Yep. What's this, What would you suggest that person go to next? So the second resource I would really recommend is something more along the lines of like a systematic theology type thing. Um, but that topic and those two words can be really daunting. Um, but I met with a guy just a few weeks ago who had a family member who had questions about Satan and who is Satan. Because in our context, there's a lot of bad theology about who Satan is and whether or not he's Christ's brother. And so I picked up a really great resource. And we've talked about it on the podcast before. We've even tried to do podcasts on it. Uh, but it's Christian Beliefs by Wayne Grudem, 20 Basics Every Christian Should Know. And I just think that's a helpful resource because it takes a giant systematic theology book and really boils every subject down to just a handful of pages. It's really digestible. Do you think uh, Do you think it'd be good for somebody to get one of the bigger ones, the Christian Doctrine or the Christian yeah. Systematic Theology? They're, they're, all, they're all by Wayne Grudem. Right, and they're kind of all the same. They're just bigger versions. So you got small, yeah. medium, large. So if someone was gonna, like, you're not suggesting somebody read these things cover to cover. You're suggesting use it when these questions come up. Sure. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, the Christian Beliefs book, you could easily read that cover to cover. But that was because really how many helpful. page? How many pages is that one? It's about 150. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so that's really digestible. And this guy was a new believer. So I thought, we'll start here. Because, uh, you know, when you pull out Wayne Grudem's Systematic Theology book, that can be really daunting. You, you didn't send him to like Turretin, the recently uh, tra <laughs> right. you know, translated Bird monster Rob. three so, volume. Okay, you sent him to the little one. Yeah. So, but then if you want to dive into any of those topics further, I think those are other great resources. I mean, uh, Systematic Theology books, I think, are another great step really that's probably a pretty good start so for me i would probably say okay the esv study bible and then i think you're right that you need you need something with a good index right so you like us like i would almost say get the middle you know the the what's it called christian doctrine christian beliefs i can't remember bible doctrine bible doctrine that's what it's called get so, bible doctrine and that and then about you can 500 pages. It's a lot, but then you can use that index and yeah. you can use the table of contents so that you can you can go okay, now I do have some questions on angels yeah. or I have yeah. questions on creation or end times and you can jump to those areas and start to get a better idea of sort of what the whole conversation is. Yeah. So that would probably be that'd be my second my second recommendation is probably the middle one. I like I definitely think everybody should read that smaller one. But if you could only have two, get the study Bible, then sure. get the bigger systematic theology. Yeah. And after that, man, <clears throat> you, know, you can go anywhere, you know, if you're wanting to dive even deeper into subjects. So, okay, so let's change the question a little bit. 
What if someone is wanting to teach uh, a Sunday school type class? Well, let's say, let's say, uh, I mean, we just had this here. Like, okay, we have some volunteers that are going to teach a fifth and sixth grade yeah. class. Okay, so that's that's you know, you got some attention span issues, you got stuff, but like, okay, they're going to teach. 20 30 minutes of the bible and they're not right. going to go to a curriculum okay let's let's put that parameter out sure. they're going to open a book of the bible and they want to teach it to fifth and sixth graders now you've told them get the esv study bible yeah. and you've told yeah. them get a systematic theology book or maybe you know you provided that for them anything else that might help them there what do you what do you think helps for fifth and sixth graders it's going to be different sure. depending on where you're going but what do you think of, i mean like you've had all kinds of resources in the past what do you think for fifth and sixth graders, uh, you that's know, a toughie, I, huh? Well, it, I just have so many ideas floating through my head. So obviously, there's the the Serendipity Study Bible, which doesn't exist anymore. It's a it's based off the New International Version, 1984. Uh, but you can usually find this in thrift stores and that. But what I loved about that when I did when I started teaching, you know, fifth and sixth graders with no curriculum, is that really helped me get some conversation questions going. Because I yeah. think sometimes the hardest thing, I'm not very creative, so I can't always think of it like an icebreaker question. And this would take whole chapters of the Bible and give you kind of an icebreaker question, some conversation questions, and something to really kind of take it home with at the end. So um, we just had that happen here. I mean, this was an actual situation where I'm where I'm at. And uh and we were talking through it. And then I was talking through this young man that I think needs to be a podcast intern. I think we need another intern. It's you know, about time. It's about time for another intern. But anyway, he um, he was kind of asking these questions. And he, you know, okay, what do we do for youth? And he goes, so his responsibility is basically high school all the way down to fifth grade. Now, he doesn't teach all that in one class. He has other helpers. And so I pulled out the old trusty serendipity study Bible. But I said, you know, this is... This is out of print and they're hard to find. So let's take a look at the Life Connection Study Bible. Now, what was fascinating to me is we had my son with us. He's, um, and he's, he's 15, and we said, okay, let's read the text. Let's read the questions. Let's see what we have. We noticed in, we were in the Old Testament. We just sort of randomly picked some things we were working on. The Serendipity Study Bible has a lot more robust, yeah. you know, deep, meaningful questions they're a little dated so you got to think right. about that yeah. factor but i think it it far surpassed the life connection study bible no, you know and I, so if you can find that old one oh man and if we could find a way to bring it back into print boy howdy that would be awesome and that's a perfect example of utilizing something that's in a different translation than I use. Because I would take these questions and these notes. Like you said, they're a little dated. I don't use this translation. So I would just take those, copy them into a Word document, and kind of make my own little study guide for my class. Right, 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 right. And and, and occasionally the translation makes a difference, but most of the time it doesn't. You know, it only makes yeah. a difference if a particular word choice might have been selected or something. But I wish that I wish that you could get these question books like this um in just a standalone without the bible translation i think that could be really helpful yeah, yeah and you, you can get this in like like let's say you're doing a bible study and you go to like the warren wearsby's kind of introductory comment commentary series that he has the b series which i think yeah. stands for bible exegetical series or biblical exegetical series but they're all like be this be that be transformed be whatever and they're yeah. and that's very it's very accessible. It's very sort of introductory level. The hard part is he takes huge chunks. So if you're not going to go, you know, along that same pathway that he takes, you don't, you, sure. it's hard. And so the serendipity is nice because it takes at a minimum a chapter. Sometimes yeah. you'll have stuff that'll be, you know, it'll have sections for, two, you know, two or three different icebreakers throughout the chapter and multiple questions yeah. and multiple application questions. So you know, I'm I'm with you. I would say that would be a good one. Would this change for you if you were doing an adult class? Like, let's say you had not new Christians, pretty savvy group of people that maybe some of them have been, uh, they're professionals in their career. They, you know, whatever. They can yeah. read. We're not talking about brand new believers. Yeah. And so they come to you and say, okay, we have the, the ESV study Bible. I have Grudem. Yeah. And uh, what what would you recommend for me because i'm going to be teaching a bible class through whatever yeah, um, absolutely. what would be your recommendation 
So I still think the serendipity study, study Bible is helpful because those conversations are, I think, first of all, geared towards adults. So that, those can be good discussion questions. Uh, but we had some teachers start teaching a class in John this quarter uh, in our class hour, and they actually just picked up R.C. Sproul's commentary on John. And what I love about that is it's basically his sermons. So it's not super high level theological, um, but it was something that really works, I think, for them as a primer to help them understand what they're going to be talking about and, and really help them take home what they've just read as they're studying and preparing. So, What do you think about the uh, Christ-centered exposition series? I think David Platt might have been an editor for those. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm talking about? Would you recommend yeah. one of those? I, I, I do, and I have just recently. Uh, some guy in our church has been finding those really cheap here and there uh, digitally. So for Kindle and stuff, and that's really helpful, even as a congregation, you can pick that up for a series that your pastor's preaching through, and that's just, they're, they're really good devotional type reads that you can read and study and, and enjoy. I think, I think for me, so if someone came to me, and they are in the context I'm in, saying, okay, I want to do a Bible study or something, my recommendations would be a study Bible, probably ESV study Bible, but we'll see. We'll do a little competition on that one. Sure. And then, and then. And then the uh, the serendipity is good, you know, for that. But I, I really like the New Testament use of the Old Testament by uh, Beal and is it Carson that does that one? Yeah, Carson. Uh, that was on my desk this morning, actually. I actually uh, use that in all my sermon prep. Yeah. Like, I love it. And people say, okay, so how does it work? What it does is it's it's the it's a commentary on the New Testament yeah. Just got all the books of the New Testament, but what they do is they take all of the direct quotes, the the allusions back to the Old Testament, um, and the various connections the New Testament depends on from the Old Testament. That's really all they say. So a lot of times you find yourself going, oh, I need to go back and read that so I can see how it connects. But people tell me, okay, so that's helpful, but then, so I mean, what you're doing is you're letting the Bible yeah sort of interpret the Bible for you. But then people go, well, what about the Old Testament? Well, that's where the index comes in really helpful. You go to the Old Testament, you say, I wonder if the New Testament has anything to say about this. You go to the index, you look up your your Old Testament verse and go, wow, as it turns out, it's quoted here and here and here in the New yeah. Testament. The thing I love about it is that lets the Bible become yeah. your chief commentary from other parts of the Bible in what you're studying. So that I, I recommend that to anybody yeah. preaching sermons, teaching classes, that thing is a beast. It's great. Oh, it's great. It's awesome. And it looks daunting because it's a big <clears throat> book, but it's really digestible and really easy because you're just drilling into the passage that you're looking at, you know? So, right. So like a typical section might be half a page to three or four yeah. pages at the most. Yeah. So oh. depending on a pericope. All right. So those are your big choices. Yeah. Uh, ESV study Bible or CSB. You threw that. was pretty close toss yeah. up there. Yeah. A study Bible, a good study Bible, yep. which you can find a video on the Salty Believer YouTube channel about how to pick a study Bible and, and how to get a good one. Uh, so you can find that. Then next was the serendipity out of print, uh, out of print resource, which is great. Oh, no, no. Next second. No. I'm sorry. Second was yeah. systematic theology. Yeah. And you're saying Grudem or something that's easily accessible. Something like that. Yeah. Then third, the Serendipity Study Bible. And then we threw in there, if you're teaching a class, the New Testament use of the Old Testament. These are our big top yeah. top recommendations. And I think we would pretty much agree. I think we're I think yeah. we're on the same page. And our and our assignment is to compare a couple of these top yeah. study Bibles to so see how they line that. up together. Yeah. So, okay. So do you have anything you want to add on this? Like I mean, have we covered the basis? You feel good about it? Yep. No, I think that's great. I think those are the big hitters. So Okay, so if your congregation listens to this podcast, they don't need to come to you and say, what should I get? Because you've put it out there. That's right. <laughs> All right. Now, if you're listening to the podcast and you go, hey, that's actually really helpful. That's I should probably pick up one of those or you don't have a study Bible. My goodness. Don't right. just let this go by the wayside. Go take advantage of this and study God's word and enjoy God's word and and let that be really fruitful. If you have different suggestions, if you're like, no, 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 you're missing this thing or that thing, or you need to get this or get that. Um, and, and we're okay. Before you start sending me all your emails, I'm already assuming prayer and that the Holy spirit illuminates. And we're just talking about just books to put with your Bible. Okay. So, um, or if you're going to send me an email that says no books at all, well defend that and, 
and maybe we'll talk about it. But if you have other questions or other ideas, we'd love to hear from you. SaltyBeliever at gmail.com or go to the website SaltyBeliever.com and, and put something in there in the, in the communication forum. And if you're in Salt Lake, if you're in the Bountiful area, go see Josiah and talk to him directly. Josiah, what's the website for your church? Yeah, it's RedeemingLifeUtah.org. And I am in Holdridge, Nebraska, and our website is is possibly going through some changes. And so the current website address is theporchlife.org. Um, but if you're in Holdridge and I'm in Holdridge, you probably ran into me in the grocery store. So don't hesitate to just come up and say, hey, Pastor Brian, what should I do? And we'll have a, we'll have a chat right there in the frozen food section because uh, I'm in a very small town. And... <laughs> And I run into people all over the place, and I would love to have you come up and chat with me. Introduce yourself to me, um, and we'll chat. Hey, Josiah, I'm looking forward to the conversation we have about the study Bibles. And, and so, you know, whatever time you need, and maybe between now and then we'll deal with some other questions. But it's been great to chat with you. Listeners, it's been great to have you along. Don't keep us a secret. Let your friends know about the podcast. And, uh, and please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Till next time. Thanks for listening. Salty Believer Unscripted is a production of SaltyBeliever.com. Visit the website to find more resources like the podcast you've just listened to.